Hello, I'm Dr. Nicholas Cohen, and I'm here to share with you 10 tips about colposcopy, what to expect and how to best be prepared. Tip number one is to understand why a colposcopy is done. A colposcopy is done for an abnormal pap smear. When a colposcopy is uh, done, tissue is obtained and sent to the laboratory. Ultimately, a colposcopy helps prevent cervical cancer. A pap smear it looks over here. At, this is your cervix. And this is the area where the colposcopy is used to examine this tissue and obtain a biopsy sample. So what exactly is a colposcopy? A colposcopy is this machine over here being used by the doctor to get a better look at the area that was examined during the pap smear. The colposcopy uses magnification, so it makes the area larger, and it also uses light, so it makes the area of cells that are being examined easier to see. It's important to keep in mind that the Colposcopy doesn't even touch you. It's just used for the doctor to get a better look. Tip number three. So we've talked about what colposcopy is and why it's done. It's done for abnormal uh, cervical cells, cells of your cervix, which can eventually lead to cervical cancer. There are ways before you even have an abnormal pap smear to prevent having abnormal cells and to prevent cervical cancer. And that's what we're going to talk about next. The first tip I have for how to prevent cervical cancer is to get the Gardasil vaccine. The Gardasil vaccine protects against human papillomavirus, HPV, specifically human papillomavirus types 16 and 18, which cause cervical cancer, as well as 6 and 11, which cause warts. But the important thing is that getting this vaccine prevents the virus that causes cervical cancer. And this vaccine is recommended in girls and in boys starting at age 12. There's three doses of the vaccine, and it's recommended that girls and boys get this vaccine before they become sexually active, so starting at age 12. Tip number four, my second tip for preventing cervical cancer is for women to get regular pap smears. The current guidelines are to get your first pap smear at age 21 and your last pap smear at age 65. Up until age 30, you should get pap smears every three years. And then at age 30, if your pap smears have been normal, to get pap smears every five years. But when you get the pap smear, to also get the HPV virus test so that you have both combine the pap smear and the HPV virus test starting at age 30 every five years. Tip number five, how to prevent cervical cancer, is not smoking. Smoking increases the risk of getting the virus and of not being able to fight the infection so that it goes away. So I absolutely recommend that you don't smoke, not only to prevent cervical cancer, but for the many health benefits that go along with not smoking. Tip number six, also how to prevent cervical cancer, is to always wear a condom. Wearing a condom does decrease the risk of getting the HPV virus, of getting HPV. In addition, it re reduces the risk of getting HIV, AIDS. When you have AIDS, you're at a very high risk of getting HPV and of subsequently getting cervical cancer. So I suggest wearing a condom for all sexual encounters unless you're 100% sure that the partner you're sleeping with has no infections and is not sleeping with anybody else. I recommend consistently wearing a condom not only to prevent HPV and cervical cancer, but especially to prevent HIV AIDS. Tip number seven is preparing for the day of the colposcopy exam. You should not put anything in your vagina, including creams um, or douches on the day of. You should eat. You should eat before the exam because if you um, haven't eaten, there's a greater chance of you fainting during the procedure. Uh, 
you should take ibuprofen, which is Motrin or Advil, 800 milligrams, 30 minutes before the procedure, which will reduce the pain. If you're having your period that day and your bleeding is heavy, you should call your doctor's office and get rescheduled because if there is a lot of bleeding during your period, then it will be difficult to do the colposcopy adequately. You should also tell your doctor on the day of the procedure about any medications you may be taking that thin the blood, including aspirin, clopidogrel, or Plavix, warfarin, or Coumadin, or heparin. These medications typically are held for seven days before the procedure, but you should do only hold these medications after talking to your doctor. Also, you should tell your doctor about any allergies you may have, especially allergies to iodine, as iodine is often used during the, pap smear, during the colposcopy exam. And you should tell your doctor if you think you're pregnant or if you are pregnant. Your doctor will probably also do a pregnancy test on the day of the procedure. While colposcopy is okay to do when you're pregnant, it's not okay to have a biopsy of the tissues. So if you're pregnant, more than likely your doctor will suggest waiting till after you deliver to have your colposcopy exam. Tip number eight is what to expect during the exam. So it'll start off with a speculum exam and possibly obtaining another pap smear. Your doctor will apply some vinegar. This is acetic acid, is the um, chemical name, and it can cause a cold sensation and maybe some stinging. The acetic acid is, is used to make the area of abnormal tissue whiter, so it's easier to see where the abnormal tissue is. And then your doctor will do a biopsy, which uh, is just taking a piece of the tissue that's abnormal. This can cause a pinching feeling and some cramping afterwards. If your doctor can tell you when she's about to get the tissue and ask you to cough, coughing actually can be helpful in becoming just being distracted and causing less pain when the tissue is sampled. Tip number nine is what to expect afterwards. There should be minimal bleeding after the biopsy and because of a solution that's used on your cervix, the blood will come out like coffee grounds. So it'll be particles, black particles, and that's to be expected. What's not to be expected and reasons to call your healthcare provider are if you develop a fever, if you have abdominal pain that is not relieved with ibuprofen, if you have heavy bleeding, meaning soaking through a pad an hour for more than two hours, if you have foul-smelling vaginal discharge. All of these reasons are reasons to call your doctor after the colposcopy exam. You should also make sure that you've had, you get your results back within 14 days. That's the longest it should take for the lab to determine what the tissues are under the microscope. If you have not heard back from your healthcare provider within 14 days, you should call your healthcare provider. Don't assume that no news is good news. Make sure that you get the results for your colposcopy. And tip number 10 is to believe in yourself. Colposcopy is a very common procedure. It shouldn't take more than 20 or 30 minutes in the doctor's office, and it's a very important procedure to be done to prevent cervical cancer. So I've discussed what the colposcopy is and how to prevent cervical cancer. I hope these tips have been helpful. Thank you very much for listening, and have a great day.